Let's take a look at an example from section 5.1, where we begin to look at the topic of Riemann sums, which we use to estimate the area between a curve and the x-axis. Something that we'll get into in chapter 5 that is not part of this particular example is how things change if the function may take on negative values over part of the interval. Um, that's a little bit more complicated here. We'll just focus on this function that is positive throughout the interval. So we've got f of x is x squared minus 1. The interval is from 2 to 4. 4 is the number of subintervals. Okay, any Riemann sum problem is going to tell you how many subintervals, what's the function, what's the interval. Okay, that's information that we need to know. Part A of this problem simply asks us to sketch this function over this interval. So I've drawn this rough sketch here. Um, again, we're focused on the interval from 2 to 4 for this function, which uh, has a graph in the shape of a parabola. So we're seeing part of that parabola there. Um, part B asks us to find the width of each subinterval. Okay, that's going to tell us how wide these rectangles are that make up our, um, that we use in the process of these Riemann sums. So if we take the, the length of the interval, divide it by the number of subintervals, we get one half. That's going to be how wide each subinterval is. It also asks us for what we call grid points. The grid points tell us where each subinterval starts and stops. Okay, so when you have four subintervals, you're going to have five grid points, and they're spaced half a unit apart in this example. Part C asks us to draw the situation where you've got your left hand sum and also draw the uh, right Riemann sum, the, the picture that goes along with the calculation. So notice for the left Riemann sum, each rectangle that I've sketched there has its height determined by the height of the function at the left end of each subinterval. And these are very rough sketches here, uh, but you get the idea. Um, at how these are similar and how they're different. For the right Riemann sum, the height of each rectangle is determined at the right end, or the right grid point, of each of those subintervals. So the calculation is this. We're trying to estimate the area underneath the curve, right, between the x-axis and the curve, and we're doing that with rectangles. The examples that we're going to tend to see here in section 5.1 will have a relatively small number of rectangles because we want to focus on being able to go through this calculation by hand. It does become impractical when you start getting more and more subintervals. Technology can be very useful in that regard. If you wanted to do a thousand subintervals, you could do that calculation with the aid of technology. You wouldn't want to do that by hand. But with four, it's pretty straightforward, not uh, an unreasonable amount of work to um, find the areas of those rectangles and add them up. In order to get the height of each of the, we know what the width is, right? But in order to get the height of each rectangle, we need to evaluate the function at certain grid points. So here's what those calculations will look like. For the left Riemann sum, which I've uh, abbreviated as L sub 4 for four subintervals, we're going to evaluate the function at x sub 0, or x0, x1, x2, x3. Okay, or more specifically, for this example, we're going to evaluate the function at 2, 2.5, 3, and 3.5. Okay, 
don't forget to multiply by the width of the sub intervals because we're calculating area. And for the left Riemann sum, we get 13.75. For the right, it's similar, but we start with 2.5 and we end with 4. And we get 19.75. Okay, 13.75, 19.75 in whatever units of area are involved here. We weren't given units. Um, let me point one thing out. So notice in this case, the left-hand sum gives us a smaller value than the right-hand sum. This particular function is an increasing function. And with an increasing function, the a left Riemann sum will always underestimate. And with an increasing function, a right Riemann sum will always overestimate. And that's the opposite for decreasing functions. And of course, plenty of functions are neither always increasing or always decreasing on the given interval. So we don't always know uh, in advance whether we have an overestimate or underestimate. But in a case like this with an increasing function, we know for sure that the, the value we get for a left Riemann sum will be lower than the true area under the curve. Right Riemann sum will be greater than. So somewhere in between those two values, we saw the 13.75 and the 19.75 is the true area under that curve. We're, we don't see this in section 5.1, but what we're coming to is a way to actually calculate that exact area. At this point, uh, we're limited to estimation, and this is the process um, that we use to estimate those areas. I hope you found this helpful. See you in the next video.